loaded and ready to roll. And you know what that means. It's race day. Hey, a good Saturday morning to you. And welcome to Cocoa Speedway's Lap Time Live. Brought to you by Cocoa Casino and by One Hour Air Conditioning and Heating. Race and Radio here on Outlaw Country, AM 1400. I'm your host, Mike Stanhope. And thank you for joining us today as we get set for action tonight. Around number two of the 2014 Cocoa Speedway Racing Series action in all five local divisions tonight as the IMCA Modifieds, the Pro Stocks, the Fisher Automotive Street Stocks, the IMCA Northern Sport Mods, and the Napa Auto Parts IMCA Hobby Stocks are all set for side-by-side action tonight. And also set to join us as a part of today's special race day preview is Adolfo Noriega, driver of the number 35 Street Stock. Noriega coming off a win in the season opener just two weeks ago, and in fact, on a four-race winning streak dating to the end of last season. Adolfo is going to be joining us in just a few, but first as we get set for racing tonight to look at the first set of point standings for the 2014 season, which for the most part reflect the feature event finishing orders from just a couple of weeks ago, and it sure feels good to say it. The championship chases are well and truly underway. And first of all, in the Napa Auto Parts IMCA Hobby Stocks, it is Yuma's Craig Evers driver of the number 22 who is on top of the standings. Out front of the driver in the number two position, Brent Wofford and his number 27 rounding out your top three, Brian Johnson in the number 42S. And only a top three to report so far was only three cars took the track for that season opener. A situation that looks to change this week as several competitors who needed some additional time to get their race machines ready are reportedly ready to get back into the thick of the action tonight. Among them, Jason Bashirs and his number 64. Next in the IMCA Northern Sport Modifieds, it is Yuma's Josh Wood driving the J11. He is on top of the standings right behind him. Yuma's Timmy Reese driving the number 38, rounding out your top five from out of the Imperial Valley. Shannon Mohammed, along with Keith Smith and Cody Daffern, again, your top five in the IMCA Northern Sport Modifieds. Wood's win two weeks ago, his first in the Northern Sport Mods in a race that featured several very fast cars. The action promises to be back and forth again tonight. We move now to the Fisher Automotive Street Stocks where the points stack up like this on top of the standings. Adolfo Noriega driving the number 35. He is your points leader. Right behind him, it is Chula Vista's Manny Baldivia is in the two spot. Yuma's Jimmy Davey in the third position with Joey Essery and Sean Hoskins rounding out your top five. Several noticeable absences from the ranks of the Street Stocks a couple of weeks ago. Among them, defending track champion Mike Harlan in his number seven, Captain Henry B in his number 87, who sat it out with engine woes. Dave Amos in his number 6, Pat Stubbs in his number 4, among others, several of them aiming for a return to action tonight. Next, the Pro Stocks, where your top 5 shake out as follows. It is Brawley's Brett Ashurst on top of the standings. Right behind him, Yuma's Brett Samala driving the number 1 with Joe Haynes, his 17Z, in the number 3 spot, the 14 of Steve Anthony in the 4 position, and Brawley's Jason Higginbottom, his is number 45, rounding out your top five. Ashers looking to compete in the full season schedule for 2014 after making only a couple of races during 2013. Both he and Samala nose to tail for much of that pro stock feature two weeks ago, an apparent miss in Samala's engine, not enough to keep him from chasing Ashers right to the line. And finally, in the IMCAA modified, it is Imperial's Lance Murray driving the 19SB on top of the standings. Glendale, Arizona's Ryan Roth driving the number 45. He sits second in the standings with Farmington, New Mexico. Zane DeVelbus in the number three spot. Cleghorn, Iowa's Jason Breeze in the four position. And Imperial Steve McCullough rounding out the top five. Mari, Roth, and DeVelbus, who, by the way, is the 2010 IMCA Modified National Champion, waged a thrilling duel over the closing laps of the round number one feature two weeks ago. All three cars side-by-side side at times and nose-to-tail in close quarters action that was, well, it was without let-up. Mari finally getting around the outside of Roth into the line first in a drag race from out of turn number four, the margin of victory just a couple of inches. Roth, DeVilbus, and Breeze were among several big out-of-town names in to get some action at Cocoa Speedway in advance of the upcoming IMCA Winter Nationals, which will run for two consecutive weekends in mid-February at Cocoa Speedway. In all, drivers from six different states 
represented in the Modifieds two weeks ago will likely, possibly, see some more additions to that roster tonight as word out of the North and the Midwest is that more cars are on the way. And with that, we're set for action tonight. Round number two of the 2014 Kokopah Speedway Racing Series. Main gates, as always, open at 5 with racing tonight set for 7 p.m. Well, coming up next, we're ready to visit with your opening night winner from two weeks ago at Kokopah Speedway, a man who's certainly no stranger to victory lane out of the diamond in the desert. Adolfo Noriega, driver of the number 35 street stock, is set to join us next here on Racing Radio, Kokopah Speedway's Lap Time Live, presented by Kokopah Casino and by One Hour Air Conditioning and Heating. Back with more in just a moment here on Outlaw Country, AM 1400. Jennifer Blackwell, photography, presents small sweethearts for kids 12 and under. Let Jennifer capture your smallest sweetheart's smile and personality. Book today, 446-5803-446-5803. Just $40 for a small sweetheart photo session. Call today, 446-5803. That's Jennifer Blackwell Photography. Today, luck is on your side more than ever, Arizona. That's because the new Lucky Life Scratchers from the Arizona Lottery are here. And they can make you win and win again. The top prize for these tickets is five grand a week for the next 20 years. That's right. You could keep winning for the next two decades. Plus, you can take home thousands in second chance prizes. All you got to do is stop by your local Arizona Lottery retailer. Tickets are $1, 2 5 and 10 So get yours and make it your lucky day. The Arizona Lottery, you can't win if you don't play. Hi, welcome to Pine Hardware. Hi, I'm Jim from APS. Oh, hey, Jim. Uh, looking for some tools? We've got what you need. Actually, I might have some tools you could use. Did you know APS Solutions for Business has energy efficiency tips and tools that can save your business energy and money? Jim, you had me at save. Now, what can I help you find? Tool belts. Mine's due for an upgrade. You've got options. Find them all at APS.com slash options. To order stickers, SignPro can produce custom stickers with your logo or business information. Give them to your customers or label your equipment for a great professional look. That's SignPro, 783-7776 or stop by 1702 South Arizona Avenue. SignPro, where they are perfect to the letter. You're just happy Welcome to the year of freedom with Clear Talk Wireless, where we all stand up together and say no to restrictions to your wireless plan. No contracts, no data caps, no limitations, ever. And Clear Talk always gives you the freedom to flash your current phone so you can keep it. That's the freedom of Clear Talk Wireless, and it's enough to make you feel as free as a panda. You know, because pandas don't wear pants. Discover the value of freedom with Clear Talk. Get four lines of truly unlimited talk, text, and data for just 25 bucks a month per line on Clear Talk's nationwide network. Clear Talk. More value, more freedom. More at cleartalkwireless.com. Cancer Society's Relay for Life will be at Desert Sun Stadium on April 26th and 27th. Hi, I'm Rebecca Larson, the event chair. I invite you to get your teams together or join a team soon as the deadline is fast approaching. The American Cancer Society's Relay for Life is an overnight experience you'll never forget. We walk all night because cancer never sleeps. Last year, over 2,000 participants from 130 teams raised $250,000 to help find a cure for cancer. They made our Yuma, Arizona Relay the biggest in the state of Arizona and New Mexico. Mexico. Over 3,000 survivors came to our event where we celebrated survivors, remembered our loved ones that we have lost, and fought back to raise funds to find a cure for cancer. For more information, visit our website at www.relayforlife.org backslash Yuma AZ to get started today. That's relayforlife.org backslash Yuma AZ. Listening to Racing Radio with Lap Dive Live, presented by Gogaba Casino and by One Hour Air Conditioning and Heating here on Outlaw Country, AM 1400. Once again, I'm your host, Mike Stanhope. A special race day edition of Lap Time Live as we get set for round number two of the 2014 Coca Cola Speedway Racing Series tonight. Again, gates open at 5, racing at 7 p.m. And joining us now, today's special guest, it's Yuma's Adolfo Noriega, driver of the number 35 Street Stock. And welcome to the show, Adolfo. 
Hey, good morning, Mike. Thanks for having me. Hey, thank you for taking the time out of a busy race day to join us today. Hey, you got to be feeling pretty good about the way the uh, 2014 season got underway a couple of weeks ago. Absolutely. We love it when a plan comes together. That's how we joke about it. But, yeah, everything worked out really nice. We finished off the season really well last year. Well, it was only a month or so ago. So uh, we just had to do some preventive maintenance and some uh, some basic uh, checkups on the car and came back how we left off. Uh, as we noted at the top of the program, uh, you're on a four-way uh, winning streak, the uh, three at the end of the 2013 season and, of course, the season opener. Any big changes that you made, or are you feeling really good with where you've got the car now? No, we, we feel pretty good. We're still making minor changes because... Uh, uh, the wins are, it sounds like we're doing very well with four wins in a row, but uh, t the truth is they're very tough wins. Last one was by uh, like a car length, and man, it gave me a really hard time there towards the end as my car was starting to fade away. So we're making small changes to try to prevent that. We'll uh, come back in and talk more about uh, ongoing adjustments to the race car. Uh, you are one who does a lot of homework when it comes to what goes into the car, setup, et cetera, learning the lessons of the track. And, and again, I want to come back to that in just a few minutes. Uh, but I want to go all the way back to Origins. Uh, we were talking just before the uh, show began about your start in racing here in the Yuma area, all the way back to 1995. What's changed for you over the years? Well, a lot of things have changed, uh, basically because when we started racing, we had no idea what we were doing. I just knew that I wanted to participate in it. Uh, when I started racing at the then Yuma Speedway, uh, before that I had been racing sand drags because uh, I had a nice Jeep. And, and sand drags were cool because they had them here locally and across the border in Mexico. And we could prepare a car to race on a weekend, and then we could also take it out to the sand dunes or the desert or El Golfo and, and have fun with it. So it was like a multi-purpose project. But, uh, you know, my parents live down the street from Cocopa Speedway, so uh, when I hear those, I heard those cars roar back then in the 90s, early 90s, I eventually made my way over there to take a look, and, and I was hooked. In sand drags, I was used to uh, racing one car at a time for a few short seconds. And when I saw how many cars were on the track at the same time and how a car could weave through traffic and start in the rear and make it to the front and beat uh, a bunch of other guys, and, and I just imagined how long that uh, adrenaline rush was, I, I was hooked and I, I really wanted to participate in it. So uh, it was not long after that I met, with, I met uh, my friend Erwin Twist, who owned a car, who somebody else drove uh, for him, but he wasn't very competitive, and I remember Erwin getting a little frustrated because he, he wanted to win. Uh, he wanted to at least uh, have the potential to win and have the car run up front. So he asked me if I'd be interested in driving it for him, so I said absolutely. I went out there and quickly learned how how easy it looks compared to how it is behind the wheel. Especially when you have no idea what the car setup is. You don't know what to expect. You have no idea what it's going to do when you reach uh, the end of the straightaway and, and back off the gas. Um, so those are the things that we've learned uh, from uh, through the years, is, is how to set up a car so that we can get the most out of it. Was there an aha moment for you during those formative years, so to speak, when, when you were learning what it takes to be successful on the track, some point where it all came together for you? Yes, that's a good question. You know, it, it actually happened when I took a break from racing. Uh, we got tired after a few years of racing here at, at Zuma Speedway, and the rules kept changing, and it kept getting more and more expensive to be competitive. So uh, I took a few years off right about the time I finished college, and I started a new job at YPG, and, uh, and I got married soon after that and had my first uh, girl. So I took uh, about four or five years off, and during that time, I, 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 was, I was still interested, but I just had other priorities. So I, I read. I read a lot, a lot of books, a lot of technical manuals. Uh, started seeing more and more stuff on the Internet, which was uh, in its infancy back then. And we learned what we were doing wrong. I finally saw it in print. How in the world did I expect my car to be fast on a dry slick track when, when I was running 49% rear? You know, stuff like that. It started to click. Everything I read I started to click with what I had experienced and the, um, the troubles we had gone through. So by the time uh, Imperial Speedway opened back up a few years after Yuma closed down, we put a car together 
and took it out there and implemented uh, all these things that we've learned to borrow a set of scales and, and put a, a good basic setup on the car and we went straight to the front. Your name has been pretty much synonymous with street stock since you got into racing uh, oh so many years ago. Ever any thought about branching out into the other classes or, or you know, are there more challenges out front of you regarding street stocks? We have played with the idea of going out into other classes. I've had a pro stock. I bought a sport mod. For a brief moment, I, I had a uh, an A mod. But to be honest with you, it is just so expensive to run in those other classes and to run up front. You don't need a super expensive car to participate, but you need very good equipment if you're going to consistently run up front. And, and that's the truth. Anybody who tells you otherwise is straight lying to you. And, and I'm not interested in spending that kind of money or putting my family in any kind of financial hardship so I can go out and have great fun in a modified when I'm having great fun in a very competitive street stock class. And that is the bottom line. If you're not having fun, then why do it? That's exactly right. We're talking with Adolfo Noriega. He, again, your winner round number one of the 2014 Cocopa Speedway Racing Series, a multiple street stock champion at the Diamond in the Desert. And we'll continue our conversation with Adolfo in just a moment here on Racing Radio, Cocopa Speedway's Lap Time Live, presented by Cocopa Casino and by One Hour Air Conditioning and Heating. January 25th at the West Wetlands Park, LNS Promotion presents the 9th Annual Bluegrass and Western Music Festival. This year, besides spectacular bluegrass from the Blue Canyon Boys, North Country Bluegrass, and the Larry Gillis Band, you'll also hear some great Western and cowboy music from cowboy entertainer Dave Staney, plus John Moore and Steve Spurgeon and friends. A great day of music in the park from 10 till 6 p.m. There'll be crafts and food booths. This is an outdoor event, so bring your own chairs. No pets allowed in the audience area. Advanced tickets are $15 each. For ticket locations and more concert information, call 209-480-4693 or log on to lnspromotions.com. The ninth Annual Bluegrass and Western Music Festival is sponsored in part by Budweiser, The White Sheep, Happy Chef, The Puente Inn and Suites, The Fun Factory, and KCYK Outlaw Country. Some tequila for your little one. That's right. A little tequila, they're broken, drinking my hot big Tequila! Nothing better for celebrating with your kids and introducing them to potential alcohol abuse. Remember that the younger he starts drinking, the more likely he is to abuse it. Don't give alcohol to your kids. To learn more, visit www.foyourchild.org or call 1-877-767-8844. A message from Mothers Against Drunk Driving and the Ad Council. Century Link presents the Yuma JC's 2014 Silver Spur Rodeo, February 7th through the 9th. The big week kicks off with motocross versus barrel race. Friday is Senior Day. Saturday is Tough Enough to Wear Pink and Military Appreciation Day. And Sunday is Ram Rodeo Day. The Yuma JC's Silver Spur Rodeo, celebrating 69 years at the Yuma County Fairgrounds. Gates open at noon. For ticket information, go to yumarodeo.com. Sponsored in part by Century Link, Ram Rodeo, Fisher Dodge, and Justin Boots. Yuma Investment Group Wealth Management will be hosting a free educational seminar Tuesday, January 21st at 6 p.m. at the Yuma County Main Library. Learn the fundamentals of investing and how to handle uncertain markets. Discover how to avoid making the same mistakes over and over and how not to outlive your assets. This truly easy-to-understand educational seminar will help you make the most of your retirement years. Call 329-1700 to reserve your spot today. Securities offered through LPL Financial Member FINRA SIPC. Hi, I'm Jennifer Blackwell, News Director for Outlaw Country. Yuma has been my home for over 20 years. I'm raising my family here, and I love being a part of this community. I truly do care about Yuma and keeping everyone up to date on local news and things that impact our area. Please tune in for local news with me, Jennifer Blackwell, the voice you can trust. First, fast, local, and accurate. You can also follow the latest news on the Outlaw Country Facebook page. You can find us at facebook.com slash outlaw Yuma. Welcome back to Racing Radio, Cocopa Speedway's Lap Time Live, presented by Cocopa Casino and by One Hour Air Conditioning and Heating here on Outlaw Country. 
And once again, we are joined in studio by today's special guest, Adolfo Noriega, driver of the number 35 street stock. And Adolfo, want to go back to the uh, 2013 season here for a couple of moments, a year of transition for you as uh, you made the switch, so to speak, from the former rules package into the new IMCA stock package, uh, stock car package, uh, as part of the transition, which will be complete when we start 2015. Bit of a challenge. Uh, how are you embracing that now? Well, I'm okay with it now. I was... Uh... I was against it at first uh, because there were a lot of cars already participating in the street stock class. There's a lot of Camaros, which is one of the biggest problems with it is that the Camaro car is being uh, basically phased out of uh, stock car racing or street stock racing because uh, one of the first rules in the IMC stock car uh, rule book is no Camaros, no Mustangs. So any, any Camaro around here is going to become obsolete at this track. Uh, in, in stock car racing, and of course I had a very good Camaro, and I and I learned it well. I learned the leaf spring suspension system very well, and we were com very competitive in it. Won a bunch of races in it, and I I was apprehensive about changing over, and, and not to mention the fact that I would have to go out and spend uh, money on on another car. Um, so we held out for a while, you know, the 2013 season, we can divide into two halves. The first half, I ran the Camaro, and we won a couple races, but uh, mostly lucked into that one running second, and, and later uh, made a mistake, and I capitalized on it on the last lap. That was one of the occasions. And just coming well prepared, it allowed us to win a few races, but uh, we weren't uh, doing as well as we had become accustomed to. Um, but we felt we had to make the changeover to the IMCA stock car to, to be competitive with those fast guys that were coming in with their, with their new IMCA stock car legal cars. So over the summer I made a, made a big sacrifice and got a hold of one of these IMCA stock cars and, and came out with it and struggled with it early on because it was a different type of car, handles different than the Camaro that I was used to. But uh, it's just a car, you know, the, the car is just a bunch of systems, a bunch of mechanical systems. It, it doesn't know any better. You just uh, put the spring rate that you want, the shock rates, the percentages, and then uh, you go out there and drive it, uh, analyze where it's uh, not doing as well as uh, you want it to, and come back and make the changes uh, to adjust for that. So once we had a few races under our belt with it, we, we got to figure it out, and now the car is pretty good. That's something I really wanted to uh, stress, and that is uh, you are one to really, really pay attention to what the track is telling you and the feedback that the car is giving you. All right. Yeah, that's what's fun about dirt track racing is that uh, the track is changing throughout the night uh, from what you can expect uh, in a heat race to what you're going to have in the second half of the main event. Uh, that's, that's two different tracks. So sometimes we start off with a car in the main event that's not really good, but I know that as I burn off a little bit of fuel and the track slicks over, uh, which is usually what happens, uh, that the car will come to me, and that's where we want to be better is at the end of the race. Goals that you have for this year? You know what? I keep saying it every year, and, and sometimes it doesn't work out that way, but uh, my goal this year, again, uh, is to just have more fun. Not necessarily win more races. Of course, we want to win more races because that is fun, but I would rather uh, take home a hard, fun, very fun second place than, than a win that uh, didn't mean a whole lot. That that fun factor uh, has got to be off the charts considering how close the racing has been since we've seen more and more cars go to that IMCA stock car package. Oh, that's right. Yeah, some of these guys uh, have really stepped it up. They're bringing out some good cars, and it, it shows in the racing and how close uh, some of the racing is. Um, so it does make it more exciting, and it pushes me to go back in the shop and try to figure out how we can make this car better and not just not just sit on it because it was pretty good before uh, we're not going to make drastic changes if the car's basic setup is good but it could always be faster it could always be faster until i no longer make a mistake on the racetrack and the car is as fast as it can be we're going to continue to try to make it faster and we're going to make adjustments to it I'd like to talk about driving style just a little bit i've had many racers tell me they love racing against you because you know, they know they're not going to get into that scrape with you, so to speak. Uh, what is your approach on track? My approach is simply respect the other racers and hope that they respect me in return. The thing is, uh, 
we do this for fun, uh, and it takes a lot of time and a lot of work. You know, we spend a lot of time working on these cars, time that we could be at our kids' ball games or, or other activities uh, with their 4-H animals or whatever they're into, or, or simply being inside the house and watching a movie with the family. Sometimes that would be great, but I don't get to participate in that too much because we are in the shop. So. I, I understand that better than anyone, and I don't want to go out and hurt somebody's car or be the cause of somebody's accident because uh, it would feel terrible. You know, so I, I respect them, and I drive them with respect, and I'm a firm believer that you can be very fast, very competitive, and win races without having to beat up other cars. You don't need to, to move a car in the corner to get past them. You just got to uh, sometimes be a little patient and, and watch where they're uh, maybe a little bit slower than you, and then uh, try to make a plan to capitalize on that on the next lap and get them with a clean pass observations out front and things do come to you and then it's time to bounce. That's true. And you know, I have uh, had my run-ins with other guys and I try to talk to them afterwards and let them know, look, man, that, that was an accident. Uh, I, I made a mistake. I make mistakes like, like anybody else out there. Every single person out there on that racetrack makes mistakes. And uh, sometimes our cars will, will touch. And but but I'm not going to make a habit of that. You know, I do want guys to feel comfortable racing with me side by side. I'll give them the room, and I expect, you know, some courtesy back as well. We talked about the time commitment. It's obviously a big, big one uh, to get a car prepped, get it out on track, uh, but also it takes a big commitment from supporters. Definitely. We couldn't do this without our, our support team, and that starts, you know, at home with my wife and kids. Uh, I have my kids out there helping clean the car, sweep the shop, whatever they can participate with. And my wife is very supportive, uh, which is important because if I had a problem at home like that, you know, it wouldn't be as fun. But uh, I also uh, want to thank my my brother. He's a mechanical engineer. He's my crew chief, and uh, we bounce a lot of ideas off each other. He's really good with, with formulas, thermodynamics, all this sort of stuff that makes me confused. And with my experience behind the seat, I think we uh, we mesh really well to try to get this car faster. But my buddies Jim, Frank, Andy, Victor, George, Oswaldo, these guys come out every weekend, pay their own way, but uh, they they come to work. You know, so they they have fun uh, being in the in the pits and participating in the race, but um, they, I do put them to work, so I really appreciate them. And of course, we couldn't do it without the help of our sponsors. Uh, Coca Pop Casino signed on for another year. Uh, they're real happy with our performance last year, even though we didn't win a, a championship last year. They, they they understand why, and they they're happy that we are just competitive out there, putting their name in a positive light. Uh, the Color Shop, Salty Dog Printing. My buddy Don McCravey and uh, Performance Transmissions have been very helpful, been with us for a long time. And we just picked up uh, Scott Jeffrey with Jeffrey Fabrications going to help us out too. Adolfo, we want to wish you best tonight and through 2014 out of Coca Pop Speedway. And I really appreciate you taking the time out of a busy race day to visit with us today here on Lap Time Live. Uh, my pleasure, Mike, and uh, thank you for inviting me, and I'm a big fan of the show. Thanks. Hey, thank you very much, Adolfo, and best again to you tonight. Adolfo Noriega, one of the stars of the 2014 coca Pau Speedway Racing Series. He'll be back in action tonight out of the Diamond in the Desert coca Pau Speedway, round number two of the 2014 coca Pau Speedway Racing Series. And hey, that race action beginning tonight at coca Pau Speedway, just one of the many exciting options being offered up out of the complex of facilities, which includes... Cocoa Casino and Cocoa Speedway. And hey, here to tell us more about them, we welcome Anna Corpus. Good morning to you, Anna. Good morning, Mike. We want to invite your listeners to Cocoa Night at AWC. AWC Matadors are hosting Cocoa Night during a doubleheader men and women's basketball game. The first game starts at 5:30. Show up for your chance to win raffle prizes such as a free round of golf, tickets to the races at Cocoa Speedway, and a free hotel night stay. I'll see you there. And Coca Pau Casino, well, they're hosting Plinko. The drawings are every Thursday, Friday, and Saturday between 7 and 10 p.m. from now until March 1st. And there's one winner every hour. Now, to enter, you must have a cash club card, and you'll receive one entry for every 20 points earned per day. And get this, there's no limit on points per day. Also, tonight, it's Comedy Night with the Comedy Machine featuring Comedy Central's own Gina Manning, World Series of Comedy Matt Markman, and the last 
comic standing, Brian McKim. Now, there are two shows, 7.30 and 9.30. You can buy your tickets online at com. And the weather is perfect for golfing. Stop by Real Colorado Golf Course and Grill in Somerton or Cocopaw Bend RV and Golf Resort located off First and Strand Avenue for affordable affordable golfing rates. Keep up to date on all Cocopaw Enterprises by checking out their Facebook pages. Have a great weekend. A world of information regarding Cocopaw Speedway, Cocopaw Casino, and the 2013-14 race season and more. All available on the Internet. Be sure to stop in at Cocopaw.com, Cocopawresort.com, and, of course, Cocopawspeedway.com. And, Anna, thank you very much. We'll look forward to having you back next week. Hey, we'll be looking forward to seeing you out tonight, out at the Diamond in the Desert. Round number two of the 2014 racing season, the Cocopaw Speedway. Speedway Racing Series tonight out at Cocopa Speedway. You've been listening to Cocopa Speedway's Lap Time Live presented by Cocopa Casino and by One Hour Air Conditioning and Heating. We'll be back with more next Saturday morning, 11 a.m. here on Outlaw Country, a.m. 1400.